Hey guys, uh, I'm installing a chip or data logger in an X4 computer. I thought I'd bring you along for the ride in case anybody has questions later on about how to install my chips. So, you take all the screws out on both sides of the computer. There's going to be four in the front, two on the back edge, and four in the back. Once all the screws are out, the lids come off. There's the top, and then inside there's one, two, three, four, five, six screw holes you screws you take out of those holes, and that allows the computer to come out of the bottom so you can remove the bottom case, which is a thick cast aluminum. Now you got the computer in your hand. There are three important inspections we need to do here that always go wrong with these computers. The first one is this capacitor, all three are capacitors, but this is the first one. This is the one that has a lot to do with the MAF readings. And you take a look really hard at the bottom edge of the capacitor and you're looking for stuff to be building up between the bottom of the capacitor and the top of the PC board. You also look for corrosion on the legs of the capacitor and you look for the quality and color of the solder joints. This capacitor, surprisingly, is still good. It's got nice, shiny silver solder joints. They're in pretty good shape. Normally, this is the one that goes bad for some reason, but this one is actually good. We also look for black fungus or brown fungus or green crusties or teal crusties. Anything on the legs or the bottom of the board that's not bright silver is a problem. I'm sorry the camera works not real great here but uh, you get the picture. What you want to do is get a really bright light and maybe even a magnifying glass and go to town and have a hard look at each one of the three capacitors. Here's the second one that's in the back by the J3 port. That capacitor is actually good as well. To be honest, I've already checked these, so it's not like I'm checking them live. And then here's the third one. And at a glance, it looks okay. That left leg has a little sign of kind of teal green corrosion on it. But when I saw that thing with a bright light, from a certain angle, on the bottom of the legs... I can see some black stuff hanging down. I don't know that I can show you that, but I'm going to try. Yeah, I don't think I can catch this on film, but in certain lights, you can see that there's like some black stuff hanging down on the left leg of this capacitor. Anyway, that's it. It's enough to condemn that the capacitor is bad. So this computer needs to get all three capacitors. The capacitors uh, that you need to order to get these, they don't really make the original ones anymore. But those are the... Uh, those are the two part, uh, the three part numbers. Two of them are the same. They're 16 volt, 47 microfarad. The third one is different. It's 63 volt, 10 microfarad. You may not get the uh, exact same capacitors as that, but ask an electronics guru to try to get you as close to that as you can. And then uh, all of these are rated at 105 degrees Celsius, so you need to have that rating or higher. You get them, you have a professional electronics repair guy install them because all this board is covered with conformal coating and it's not terribly easy to do that job. It's not, in my opinion, a do-it-at-home solder job. This is something I think you're better off either sending it to a PCM rebuilder, uh, which is a roughly $150 or so, or you take it to a local electronics repair guy who is very good with this stuff and not afraid of the job. If he's afraid of the job, you don't want him to do it. So, like almost every other Fox I work on, this thing needs three capacitors. 
The 94 and up computers don't have these capacitors. That's not so much of a concern with those boards. But all these Fox body computers, these capacitors are about 10 years past their life expectancy. So even though this is a really good shape A9L, one of the nicest I've ever seen, it's still bad, unfortunately. Uh, now, for the part about installing the chip, the way this works is that guy right there, that is a J3 port. Uh, it's a factory engineering port designed for Ford to plug into this computer and tune the cars when they were new. And they never intended for us to use them, but we figured out that that's, that port basically connects to the microprocessor and ultimately to the chip. If you guys were ever wondering about it, this is the chip that actually holds the original A9L tune. Sometimes it doesn't say A9L on it. This one does. And underneath that sticker, this is one of those old uh, UV light erasable chips. So under that sticker, there's a hole in the chip. And if you hit that hole with a UV light, it erases the chip. We don't need to ever mess with that chip in Mustangs because we have the J3 port. So what happens with the J3 port is when you plug an aftermarket chip into that J3 connector, it overrides the original A9L chip and runs the program that's been programmed to the aftermarket chip instead, which also means that the minute you unplug the aftermarket chip, this goes right back to being a stock A9L computer. So that's really kind of cool. Um, now, for prepping the board, what we got to do, these pins, I've already wiped off the grease on this side, but on the back side, you can see this has the original white grease. The, the, the lucky ones have white grease on them. If you're unlucky, it's this rubbery conformal coating that's all over the board that's on both sides of this. If you have the conformal rubbery coating on this J3 port, you got to scratch all that off with like a fingernail or something and get rid of the rubbery coating entirely as step one. If yours has the grease on it like this one does, you wipe the grease off with, I don't know, a clean towel and some rubbing alcohol. So we got the old 91% rubbing alcohol here and I don't know if I can do this with one hand. I'm trying my best. So this works as good as any and it's stuff you just have laying around the house. I just wipe back and forth with a paper towel and clean conformal, uh, sorry, and clean uh, rubbing alcohol. Keep going through paper towels. Don't bother trying to reuse them. Just use them up and keep using fresh alcohol and paper towels on this thing until it's completely clean. I'm sure my friend Zach Montgomery is probably choking right now, telling me that I'm not using the right chemicals at all and all that stuff, but trust me, this works. Ain't that right, Zach? I need to invest in a tripod. This is impossible to do with one hand. Sorry, guys, for the horrible camera work. So once you get it completely clean, we're going to take some uh, some green scotch bright. I think I want that cleaner before I finish. We're going to take some green scotch bright and we're going to scuff up both sides of the J3 connector. Until they're just a little bit bright. Um, what we're looking for, so here's the deal. The, the pins on the J3 connector are copper traces. And then they have a either like a tin or lead coating over them. And that coating is then covered with the grease or the conformal coating, which is like a rubber, clear rubber spray. So the first thing we got to do is get all of the grease completely off.
And then you go in here, let that dry for a minute, and then you go in here with the green Scotch-Brite pad, and you're going to try to, as evenly as you can, scuff up the J3 connector. And uh, you're going to kind of sand on it with the Scotch-Brite pad, but you don't want to take off any more than you have to. All we're looking to do is get this, uh, these, these tin-coated pins kind of brightened up a little bit. And, and not be dull so that the chip makes a good electrical connection with the board. Yeah, it's important to note the two sides of the edge connector are not one and the same. They're separate pins. So you got to do both sides of the edge connector. The bottom side is much thicker and harder and got more tin to work with. The top side is actually super thin and you're going to do a very small amount of sanding or scuffing on this side because you don't want to go through. You should scotch bite a little bit at a time, and the minute you see copper, you need to stop. Preferably stop before you see copper, but you need to scuff it enough to kind of get the pins bright and just fall short of, uh, of scratching it enough to, to go through and hit the copper. In my experience on the front side of the board, that's this side, this is really thin. On the back side of the board, it's really thick, and you can't get through that very well. So, uh, you know, just scuff it up lightly, and then when you're all done scuffing both sides and you got nice, bright, you know, terminals, I hit it again with more rubbing alcohol to wipe off any traces of uh, the Scotch-Brite dust, and you're done. And then you can put the, the emulator or chip in it, but uh, I don't install the chip until after I've reassembled the PCM, just as simple as putting all the screws back where you found them. The only thing I should caution you about is don't over-tighten the PC board screws because you don't want to crack the board trying to tighten it down to the to the bottom of the uh, case so go gingerly there on the outside screws you can put a little more tension but on these these board screws take it easy a little bit and uh, that's it man just uh, just lightly scuff these up with scotch bright wipe them down with alcohol when you're done make sure all the conformal or grease coating is gone first and reassemble the computer and it's ready to go back in the car and have a chip plugged in it the hardest part about this deal is getting the computer out of the car. Actually doing the work is a piece of cake. So maybe I'll bring you guys along later on when I plug the chip in. For now, see ya.